we're going to paint this beautiful painting called Cherry Blossoms. Isn't that lovely? In a very short time, you're going to have one that looks just like it. All right. Just going to adjust my camera a smidge here. Hold on just a second. There we go. Now you can see it. Okay. So I have my three brushes, my small, medium, and large brush. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cover my canvas with water. The reason I do that is I'm here in Denver, Colorado. It's very dry here. And acrylic paint dries very quickly. So I want to prepare my canvas so that the paint does not dry out on me while I'm painting. So you could do it with a big brush and a water jar, water a jar, or you can spray it with a spritzer. It doesn't really make any difference how you do it, just so long as you get some water on your canvas. All right, mine's not dripping, but it is wet. It should be perfect. All right, for what I'm about to do. I'm going to use my large brush, and I'm going to dip my large brush in black paint. And I'm going to come way up here. You can see my canvas is wet. It's already starting to drip a bit. That's all right because I'm going to start at the top and go down and catch any of the drips. I'm just going to go back and forth horizontally as straight as I can. I flip my brush over and you can see there is more paint there. It doesn't really matter. This particular painting is gray. I'm going to come back in some of these areas with white. And so if I have a more solid black in some areas than I do in others, that's fine. No worries. I just want the coverage right now. And then I'll come back in and smooth it out with a little bit of white paint. I'm just, just going for some black coverage. Be sure that you're going back and forth horizontally. I'm not necessarily trying for any particular shade of gray. What I want to see are streaks, and that's going to give me some visual interest in my painting if it's not just a solid color background. Sometimes a solid color background really pops, really makes whatever's in the foreground pop. We have some solid black paintings in the studio here with a big bold flower. If that's the look you're going for, feel free. This particular one has white um, starting at the bottom and going up kind of in an ombre, meaning it's darker at the top, low, whiter at the bottom. You can do it however you want, you decide. Now I'm going to with that same brush, and my brush is dirty, I didn't bother washing it yet because I don't really need to. I'm going to go for gray. And I'm going to put white at the bottom of my canvas. Now my, my easel is a little bumpy, so there we go. All right. So I am started with white at the bottom. Oh, <laughs> it hit the painty edge and made a funny noise. That's silly. All right. And I'm going to just keep adding a little bit of white as I go and smooth it up. And that incorporates the white into the gray, into the black to make gray. And I can come back and forth. It doesn't really matter. But in general, I'm going up with the white in general. I don't want it to be per too perfect. Perfection is the enemy of having a good time, don't you think? I was gonna say the enemy of art. It's that too. You just wanna be good to yourself. We're about self-expression here, not in being perfectionists. There are lots of different styles of art that require perfectionism. We don't do that here. And that's why we have a great time in our studio, and we want you to have a great time in YouTube land too. All right, so I'm gonna keep 
just adding white. Now my canvas is starting to dry out. And I can tell because, well, just a little bit of pressure, I literally picked up my easel and tipped it a little bit. So if your canvas is drying out, you can always add a little bit more water at any point to your paint. Still pretty wet up there. But as I come down, it's thinner and it dried already. Denver is such a dry place. It, things dry really quickly here. If you're in Seattle or Portland or Indonesia or someplace with a lot of humidity, you're not gonna have that problem. But here in Denver, it's dry. So paint dries very quickly here. Acrylic paint does. All right. So I'm just gonna keep building up that gray background, going back and forth, a little white, a little black, a little white, a little black. I just want it to be streaky and interesting. And notice how right now I have my brush turned so that it's the fat side of the brush. And that's helping me move things along Oops. a little more quickly. Later, if I were painting water or something, I would hold my brush in a different direction. But for right now, I just want this paint to go on a little more quickly. And then I'm gonna to have to let this background dry a bit. It is drying quickly though, so that's good. Won't take me too long. And I'm just making sure that it's smooth. And notice how my strokes are going all the way across the canvas, all the way, all the way from one side to another. That gives me nice, smooth strokes. If you don't do that and you do little strokes back and forth, you're going to have little lines where your paint started and stopped. And that's fine too. If that's the effect you're going for, that's fine. You do you. But for me, in this painting, I just want these really smooth strokes because that's what the original has in it. And I always like to honor the original. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry for just a few minutes. And then we're gonna come in and put our beautiful cherry blossoms. All right. I think I'll just have some wine. That's what I'm gonna do. Cheers to you. Now there are a few ways you can help your paint along to dry. You could get a fan. We have a fan, we have several fans in our studio. Or you could use a blow dryer. We have one of those in the studio that's popular as well. Or you can pick up a paper plate and do exactly what I'm doing. And that works pretty well. But my favorite way is just to pick up the painting itself and just fan it, just pick it up and move it around. And since we, we have this lovely uh, paint and sip studio here and we have music playing when we're painting and it's always a party, every day's a party. It's really fun to just pick up your painting and dance around with it. That's really my absolute favorite way of doing things. So this painting is drying very quickly, very quickly. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the branches because it's dried enough to do that. All right, so I'm going to start with my branches with the large brush, okay? And it doesn't matter that I didn't clean it really well because I'm gonna go back into the black anyway. But before I do, I'm gonna mix in some yellow. So I'm gonna pick up a scoop of yellow and I'm gonna mix it into some of my black. Not all of it, because I need pure black later. So I'm gonna mix it in with some, just some. Just use a little corner, little corner of the black, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red, but don't contaminate all your red and all your yellow. 
just take it from the corner and just take it easy. What I'm going for is by mixing in some black and some red and some yellow. And then I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the other colors too, a little bit of white, a little bit of brown. Sorry, a little bit of white, a little bit of blue, but again, just a tiny bit from each one. Don't contaminate your colors. I'm gonna mix a little of all of those together and see what I get. What I'm going for is a brown. And I'm experimenting, and that's gonna be fun to experiment. So, might need a little more yellow. All right, so just mix a little bit. Don't make too much. I need about the size of, um, does anybody remember what a, a dollar coin looks like? Or how about the cross section of a zucchini? If you put a, oh, I know, piece of cucumber in your salad. About that big, that's what we need. So I put a little too much blue in. Blue is a really fully color. It just takes over everything. So I'm gonna need a few other colors to overcompensate or compensate for that blue that just really wants to run the show. So just keep make, picking it up in tiny amounts. You can probably pick it up with your small brush and that's gonna be more successful in, in getting just the right amounts that you need. I'm putting a little more red in. You don't need much blue. Okay, so we might not have a perfect brown, but to be honest with you, I don't really care. As long as it's not black and it's dark, it's gonna be perfect. All right, so I mixed in some more yellow, some more red, and I'm just mixing it all together. And I think it's gonna be good enough. Let's see, let's see how that goes. All right, you ready? Let's try it. Everyone's gonna have a different color, that's gonna be fun, okay. Now, I still have it on my big brush, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start all the way at the bottom down here, and then I'm gonna come up to the side. And as I go, because I have all the brush, all the paint on my, the bottom of the brush first, as I go, I'm gonna be, it's gonna become less paint. So I'm gonna come up, and then I'm gonna twist my brush a bit. You didn't see that coming, did you? I twisted my brush a bit. And the reason I did that, oh, little, little drip. Everything can be fixed, not to worry. We can always put a flower over that. Um, but the reason I twisted it is that gives me a thinner branch. So I'm gonna put it back in. I'm always gonna come through the trunk, always come through the trunk and then twist. And I want you to make messy, gnarly, curvy, branches, just like that. I have three there. You can have as many or as few as you want. I don't like to have them come out in a Y because I noticed when I'm outside going for a walk that the trees seem to start in a trunk and then one branch grows out on one side like that, one branch you know, then it grows a little taller and the one branch branch grows out on another side and then it grows up a little bit more and then another branch comes out and usually they alternate or at least there's about the same number on both sides approximately. Now every tree is a little different and so just as I say that you're probably gonna say, oh there's a tree in my yard that doesn't do that. It branches out in Y's and that's fine. Like I said, it's really just about making it look natural. And by having these curves in it, you're getting a more natural look than if you had straight branches, okay? All right. I'm pretty happy, pretty happy. Some of these might branch out from each other. And I didn't curve enough on that one and then I end up with a, uh, Long end. Now, one thing I see in my classes all the time is I see people come in from the sky and go down into the trunk. You know what happens if you do that? You end up with a cactus. So if you want to pay cactuses, that's awesome. That's how you would do it. You would come in from the sky and go into the trunk. But if you want something that looks more like a tree branch, 
then you want to come in from the trunk, come, go out from the trunk rather. And I turned my brush to get those small lines, but let me show you, I can also just use my small brush, that works just as well. And if you use your small brush, then you can come off of the, each branch like that. But I always come out from the, the branch that's, uh, let's see, this is the trunk, this is a branch, this is a twig, let's call it that. So I want the twigs to come out from the branches and I want the branches to come out from the, tr from the trunk. And that way I'm keeping the correct sizes. That means that my twigs are gonna be smaller and thinner than the branches, and the branches are going to be smaller and thinner than the trunk. It's just like your human arm. Your shoulder is down here, that's the widest part. Your wrist is down here, so it gets thinner. And then each one of these, let's say, you know, off of your arm, there's a, um, off of your body is an arm, and off of your arm are fingers. And so they get smaller as you go. And if you keep those principles in mind, you can paint any tree. All right, I put a lot of branches. I tend to overdo everything with trees and foliage, but you do you. All right, so while that is drying a bit, I'm going to take my medium brush and I'm gonna go ahead and make my pink. So anyone remember what colors make pink? Pretty easy. Take a big old scoop of red, put it in the middle of your plate, wherever you have room, and then take white. Now be sure to get the white that hasn't been contaminated by the other colors when you are mixing. And I'm going to just take my medium brush and blend those together until I get a pretty shade of pink. The shade of pink is not the most delicate shade I've ever seen. Um, sometimes we use cotton candy pink. This is more like a Pepto-Bismol pink, but it's your painting. You paint it the way you want, okay? You get the shade of blossom that you want and that you love, okay? And then you'll notice there's some darker pink at the bottom of these buds, and there's darker pink in the center of this flower. So we're just going to use different shades of pink. But this is the pink that I'm starting out with. Let's call that a medium pink, okay? Now, um, when your twigs on this side are dry, then it's safe to start your big flower, but not until. And what I wanna show you is that we have one, two, three, four, five petals on that flower. So I can sketch that on right about here, right about here, right about here, right about here. Just like that, that's how I can start to get that flower shape. Now mine's a little too high, I just noticed, but that's okay. No one's ever gonna see your painting. Uh, no one's ever gonna see the original. They're just gonna see your painting and they're gonna think you're a genius. So I think what I should have told you probably is start about a hand's width down. So mine's gonna be a little higher. Do I care? No. So I have those five, it looks like a starfish, doesn't it? I have those five petals poking out from the center. And now to make them a flower, all I have to do is make them rounder at the top and wider. I'm just gonna go on each one, I'm gonna make them rounder and wider. It's almost like you have a finger with a big old bandage on it. Pretty easy, pretty easy. And I was fortunate in that my twigs were dried pretty quickly. If yours weren't dry, just wait, just wait. There's no hurry. Like I said, Denver, everything dries really, really quick in Denver. And I can make it bigger if I want. I can make each petal bigger and a little more square on top. They're still smooth and round, but they have a little bit of a flat edge right on top. You can always make your flowers or whatever it is bigger 
but it's real hard to take paint away and make it smaller. Now, my pink is a brighter pink than the sample. That's okay, that's okay. Yours is gonna be a little bit off different than mine, and that's okay. If I wanted, I could just pick up a little bit of white, stir it in real well with the pink I already have. That's what I'm doing now. I'm just stirring in a little bit of white on my palette. And I could go over it again and brighten it up a little bit. But you do you. You do the shade of pink that you love. And don't worry. That's the thing about painting. I started painting at 50. I'm 57. So if I could start late in life, you can too. And now I can paint anything in here. We have 500 different paintings in the studio that we rotate on our calendar. And just start painting, just, just do it. Don't wait, you don't need an excuse. You don't need anything, just do it. Now I'm gonna take that medium brush and I'm gonna show you, actually I'm gonna, Put the, my, that brush in the water. I'm going to use my small brush. Be sure you clean your brushes often. Since we had our black on our big brush, my water is pretty dirty. So if at any time you want to stop your camera and go refresh your water, you can. Uh, I just know to, to wash them a long time, a long time, and then I check it on my napkin. I just want to be sure. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you buds. Now the buds are going to be coming out from the ends of the branches, okay? But if you have a branch that you don't like, like this one I don't like, I made it too thick. And so I can just cheat a little bit and I can put my, my bud right over the end and no one will even know that part was there. And the buds are the shape of an almond. If you can remember what an almond looks like, you can make a bud. So I'm going to, at the, on the ends of each one of these buds, I'm going to put, uh, pardon me, branches or twigs, I'm going to put a pink bud, which is in the shape of an almond. And you know what I noticed about this painting? This is a popular painting, but there's nothing green on it. It's a monochromatic painting. It's just gray and white, black and white, but then it has a pop of pink. So I don't know what that, why that's a popular idea, but this painting sells well here. We, uh, lots of people want to paint this, even though it doesn't have leaves. I'm not quite sure why it doesn't have leaves, but what the heck, who cares? I think that's part of the charm of this painting is it's very, very simple. And so just coming out from the end of each branch, I'm putting a pink almond shape above. Make it pointy at the end. Take your time, do it with your um, baby brush. And I'm thinking I didn't put any twigs right here. I might just stick one over there somewhere. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see what I, the composition when I'm done. I think it needs something over there. I like to just follow my gut and not think about things too much because then I really enjoy my painting when I just feel it. All the problems of the world just fade away into the paint when I wash them away in my water jar. That bud's a little large, that's okay. Not to worry, not to worry. Very peaceful, very peaceful. I have never been to DC or to Japan during the Cherry Blossom Festival, but I hope to live along long enough that someday I will. And they also have beautiful cherry blossoms in Traverse City, Michigan. And that I am much more likely to go there. So I'm gonna have to plan a trip for that. All right, so. Little almond shapes. 
and at the ends of each one. So I have almonds, I have cherry blossoms on all of those, and I don't have any down here, and it does seem to want some. So I'm gonna to listen to the painting and I'm just gonna put some on and then I'll put the sticks in to match. You didn't know you could grow blossoms in the air when you paint, right? You're so powerful when you paint, you can do anything, it's like magic. Ooh. These are fun to paint. They're like teardrops, but happier. Pretty. All right. Somehow I'm going to make those into come up with some kind of branch. We'll figure that out. We'll do it. All right. There's that one. Yeah, there's that one. That's kind of a weird one. It's okay. Well, it's okay. Sometimes things just grow before your very eyes and you don't really know how it got there. If I am not careful, I will cover this entire canvas with flowers. I have done that many times when I painted flowers and it's crazy. And my staff will come in and see a new painting and it's covered with foliage or covered with flowers. They'll go, oh, Nancy's been painting. All right, so I have all those beautiful buds. Now, I wanna show you what I'm gonna do to the buds. Um, some of them have to be dry in order to do the next step, and that's fine. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red, and I'm gonna stir it into some of that pink. What I want is I want a darker shade of that red, of that pink, somewhere in between pink and red very reddish pink okay and all i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the dry ones and i'm going to paint the underside of the almond i'm not going to make a straight line across it i'm just going to have these dabs coming down like that starting in the center of the almond and just pulling them down to the base now if this painting were more realistic those would be green. I don't, like I said, I don't know why there's no leaves in this painting, why it's just pink, but that's what the original artist came up with, and by golly, we're gonna follow it, because that's what we do. And then if I want to paint another one just like it and put green in it, I could do that. This pink is pretty. When it has all that red in it, it almost looks fluorescent. And it's not, just red paint. Just magenta to be exact. That's the kind that I usually put on for a regular red, as I call it. One thing I've learned from painting since I was turned 50 is there's so many different kinds of paint. Holy Toledo. We use just a basic paint here. Um, but I am learning about all different kinds of paint. I love it when someone sends me paint. So if anybody's out there wants to send me some paint to try, maybe I'll give you a plug. Because I'm learning too. We're learning together. But this is just garden variety paint, nothing fancy. All right, now I'm going to make a little more of that reddish paint, reddish pinkish paint. Just mix up a little bit more and make sure that it's red enough that when we do the center of your flower that it will contrast, that it will have enough difference in it than your flower, okay? And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make sure it's dry enough. I'm gonna start in the center. You know what, actually, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna chisel my paint on the brush so that I get a, 
I don't have any huge blobs. And by holding my plate and chiseling the brush back and forth as I twist it, or pulling back while I twist it, I'm, it gets rid of some of those clumps and makes my brush a little thinner. Now I can just come out from the center with this darker pink. And I, I'm just sweeping it out like little brooms coming out from the center of each one, little fans. And as your other ones dry, if you see any spots you missed, you can go fill them in again. Now I'm going to take that solid red and I'm going to put that in the center just a little bit. I'm just going to do a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing in another layer. So it gets more intense in the center. And the reason I want to do that is I think, I'm not a botanist, but I think that, that those colors attract the bees. And that's really what this flower is all about. I want some bees. Because if it has bees, then it gets pollinated, and then it can create more. And I'm just taking the little leftover paint that's on my brush. It's a little bit darker pink now because it was just left over and didn't clean my brush between steps. And I'm just putting another little little line or two on each one of these blossoms just so it adds a little more intensity. Oh my gosh, this pink is so vibrant. It's incredible. And I think the reason why the artist didn't put on leaves is they just really wanted you to appreciate the pink because this pops against this gray background. All right, so then I'm gonna clean my brush. Clean it really well. All right, then I'm gonna go in, start white. Make sure your brush is good and clean. If you go into your white and your brush wasn't clean, you will see it, because it will discolor your white, okay? Now, on the tops, I'm just gonna do that same thing, coming down from the tops like that. Start in the point, and come down in like three or four little strokes going down. Start in the top and pull down. Don't cover the whole top because you want to show all three of those colors. You want the that medium pink, you want the bright white, and you want that dark pink all on the same blossom. So don't cover it all up. Just start in the point, pull down a few times, two or three or four times depending, and then just put, it's just kind of putting a little frosting on the end of each one. Just starting the point, pulling down. That one has three. I can be a little more exact, but if my painting's dry, touching my pinky to the canvas, and my painting is very dry, and yours might not be depending on where you live, but I can touch my pinky down because it's dry, and that steadies my hand. Don't do it if it's wet, okay? All right. Oh, this painting is so vibrant. Pop, pop, pop. It's gonna pop off your wall. So far, so good? All right. Now, here's where you could get a little more creative if you wanted to. There, on my original, it has yellow pops and white lines. Let's try that. But if you don't want that, you could use yellow lines and white pops. You decide. I'm going to follow it like the original, OK? All right. What I mean by pops are these things that I think are called stamens. I'm not a botanist, but I think they're called stamens. Start in the center and then wiggle out. Start in the center, wiggle out, and do it like hands on a clock. Keep dipping into your white, and then so you get fresh white, and then pull them out like hands on a clock. So we have one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, there's five o'clock, there's 
six o'clock, seven o'clock, and I'm wiggling. I don't want anything too perfect. What happens is if you if you paint anything that's natural, you know, landscape or flowers or something, and you make straight lines, then people are going to look for perfection in other things, and they're not they're going to be disappointed if they're looking for everything to be perfect. So I don't make it perfect deliberately. I make things wiggly and messy, and then that way, no one's looking at perfection. They're looking at how they feel when they see the painting. All right. So the way I feel when I see this painting is happy. It's pretty. All right. So I used a much deeper pink before, and this one is much more pastel, and this one's brighter. If you want to do anything else, you can, but just know that it will be, it's on you is what I'm trying to say. Um, so this one's a little more pastel, this one's definitely deeper. If I wanted to, let's say I want to go in and make, some, make my leaves more pastel, oh, now I've committed, huh? I could do it, but start out and then just be gentle. I'm gonna go over that probably and not keep that. But I'm just saying, if you wanted to, when you're comparing the two, no one's gonna stop you from painting over what you've already done. I'm just gonna fix that. But I just wanna show you, acrylic paint dries quickly and when it dries, you can, change your mind. I also teach Bob Ross classes here at the studio. Those are oils and oils are a totally different animal. You do it, it, you can't do what I'm doing with oils. You would have a brown mess if you were just mixing and playing, mixing and playing. But with acrylic, it dries in between, so you could change your mind a hundred times. Now the oils, you'd have to scrape it off. So, anyway, I just wanted to show you that. Now I've got a, that shade was slightly off, so I'm just gonna just touch up anything, just to make it for sure the same shade everywhere. Okay, looking a little more so, right? But I did want to show you that. I, I like to make mistakes or like to show you, well, if you did want to do something, how would you, how would you do it? How would you fix it? What's the thought process? And then how to go back to what you had the first time. So I'm stalling. You probably are still working on maybe your buds or maybe the center of that flower. And I'm just going over this pink with just a, one more layer, a little bit at the top ends, at the tips of the petals, being very careful not to mess up the center. All right. The only thing this is missing are these yellow dots and possibly glitter. We do use glitter at the studio. I didn't have it on my palette because I didn't know if you wanted it. Um, or if you have some at home. This painting does have some glitter in it. So if you happen to have glitter at home and you want to put on glitter, you can. I'm gonna call my painting finished after the painting before glitter because I know most of you don't have glitter laying around. But if you do have glitter, let it dry. We use a liquid glitter. And basically all it is, is it's a clear acrylic paint with sparkles in it. And uh, I get that from craft store. So if you have glitter and you wanna put some on, uh, you, could, you could do that after your painting's dry. I'm not gonna do that, okay? Not in this tutorial. I am, however, gonna pick up, I've let this dry long enough that I think that my white will, my yellow will stick. Now, yellow, tends to be kind of a wimpy color. Remember what I told you blue is a really powerful color and it just takes over? Yellow is kind of the opposite. It's a little wimpy. So to make it a little less, less wimpy, and what I mean by that is more opaque, it, like more pigment in it, 
um, it stands up. I don't know how else to describe it. When you don't have, when you don't do what I'm about to show you, yellow can be kind of wimpy and not show up on darker colors. So I, my trick is I add a little bit of white in it and I stir it in just a little, not enough to change the color, but enough to just give it a little bit more body. So it also depends on the brand of paint that you use. Um, you decide, but I mixed in a tiny bit of white. So my, my, my yellow is gonna be nice and thick and has the body and it's gonna stick. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a yellow dot at the end of each one of those white stamens. I think they're called stamens. You can call them tentacles, arms, you call them whatever you want. I'm gonna call them stamens. I'm hoping someone will put in the comments below exactly what those are called. And I'm just going around and putting one at the very end of each one. If the paint comes off with your brush, just go back in and tap it in again. Now, this is still a little wet, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pick up more and just on some spots that are dry, I'm gonna put on some more. And the reason why I'm doing that is that some of those are going straight out from the center, but some are coming forward from the flower. And so to show that there are more of those white stamens or whatever they're called on the flower coming forward, I'm gonna put these white dots because that tells my eye, oh, there must be some that are coming straight out. And then if you do end up using glitter, you could glitter away. Those don't even have stamens, but I'm putting it on because I like it. Um, you could glitter away all you want with the center of that, maybe a little bit on each of the butts, but for now, I'm finished. I hope you had fun painting this cherry blossom painting with me today. And I know I had fun painting with you. I always have fun painting with you. So please join us again for another painting from Sabian Painting Hamden. And um, if you like our painting classes, please help us out. Please like this class and subscribe to our channel. And then you'll get a notification every time a new class is loaded and you can take it or leave it, but it does help us out a lot too. So thank you so much. And I look forward to painting with you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.